Welcome to this Sir James D. Tech video. Today I will be doing the review for the Scythe Ninja 3 CPU cooler. You can see I made a few changes in there. No more water cooling. So if you're interested in buying the entire kit, feel free to contact me. I love this design. The flame on the front, that is absolutely gorgeous. Now, first thing you notice is the push fan is on top. I literally could not fit it on the side that the push fan normally goes on right next to the RAM. And you can see underneath is that pulsating classified heat sink. And you can see how far that classified heat sink juts out. Now I was able to fit a slipstream over on that side, but the temperatures really took a hit because basically the fans were working against each other. And besides, I've already got that intake fan right there. It can see the X design very clearly, highlighting max, multiple airflow pass-through structure, which basically means the airflow can cross straight through. It can go and take a left turn. It can take a right turn. And there you can see the slipstream dial bracket just hanging there. You see that dial is so huge. I cannot get it through an expansion slot. And my thinking is, if you got something like that, then you should make the wire long enough where it could possibly fit through the water cooling holes, come all the way down, and then clip in to the expansion slot. And that's the only way I can figure how to do it, because that dial will not fit. Now installation was a little bit tricky. It reminded me a lot of putting a bicycle together. <laughs> you know, you got these little nuts and things all over the place. And Now that back plate does not stick to the back of the motherboard. So either you're going to need really long arms or you're going to need a second pair of hands. There, you can see it a little better without the RAM fans on. There's just no way to get a fan in there. It went over about two memory modules. Possibly if you have memory with smaller heat sinks, but I had about an inch where it just wasn't deep enough. And then just for perspective here, look at how huge the Ninja 3 is compared to the stock Intel 980X heat sink. That just shows how utterly massive this thing is. No wonder I couldn't get a fan on each side, either direction. I did run some benchmarks of the stock Intel 980X heatsink versus the Ninja 3. I ran Real Temp GT's Prime 95 blind test, and then I did a few rounds of Cinebench. What I'll hint about the performance is that it does absolutely maul the stock Intel 980X heatsink. So enjoy those performance figures. So it's obvious, judging by the results, that the Scythe Ninja 3 absolutely blows away the Intel 980X stock heatsink in the push configuration. However, I will be honest, I'm quite disappointed that I'm not able to do a push-pull because the heatsink is just so utterly massive. So I was pretty disappointed in that. And the other thing is, that slipstream dial bracket that is a real missed opportunity in my opinion. That dial is so huge, I could not get it through the expansion slot, on this case, from the inside out. And I've got a standard case, so the expansion slots are pretty much going to be the same for every case. And what you're left with is it basically hanging there looking ridiculous. So, boo on that. To sum up, the Scythe Ninja 3 does blow away the stock Intel 980X heatsink. However, the other criteria, there are some flaws, and therefore it cannot achieve a truly stellar grade. So my final verdict is a solid 
but disappointing B minus. Till next video, ladies and gentlemen. Talk later.